Hello, my YouTube family, how are you? So in today's tutorial, you are going to learn how to make this greeting card, and you can turn it into any kind of card, but mainly I just wanted to teach you the design here. Um, here are some supplies that you may need. Um, and I'm not a card maker, so <laughs> I may not have the proper skills, um, and you may know a better way, and if you do, by all means, do it that way. I basically just wanted to show you the design. Um, and the colors that I chose. It's the perfect time to discuss greeting cards with the holidays right around the corner. Um, so you've just got some basic supplies here and I will put a list of these in the this video's description below. Um, I got a 50 pack of cardstock and it has five different colors, 10 sheets of each color, and it was only $4.99 at Hobby Lobby. And I thought that was great. Kind of picks your color scheme for you. All right, so you will want to start off with your black cardstock. Um, and this is what we will paint the design on. Now, cardstock is heavier than paper, and paper can warp, and cardstock doesn't, so it's great. Um, or at least it didn't for me. I loved it. It was perfect for this project. Now, I'm marking off um, a four inch square, so you want to use a ruler and go up um, on two of the sides, get right in the corner there, and just mark off four inches. That is what um, I'm using for the size of this design. You could absolutely upscale this if you wanted to um, or downscale it. It's totally up to you, but for these particular tools that I used today, it was it fit right in a four by four square. Um, you can use scissors and you can just you know mark off your lines and then cut it straight across and that would work just as well. I had this handy dandy paper cutter, so that's what I used here. Now, if you don't have a guideline stencil, that's okay. You can grab your ruler and just draw a line from corner to corner and then from top to bottom and then side to side. I, of course, am going to make quick work of it uh, and just use my guideline stencil. And you can find these uh, right here in my uh, web store. All right, so the very first paint we're going to use here for the center dot is called Vanilla Shake. And it's a Deco Art Americana multi-surface satin paint. And use your blue uh, tool. You do want to make sure that the whole tip of the tool is completely covered uh, in paint. And you don't want the paint to go up the sides of the tool. You just want that uh, the very end there to be completely covered. And you want to dot straight down and then sh lift your tool straight back up. And you don't want to push too hard because um, you don't want the paint to be missing from the center. If your paint is missing from the center of your dot, you're pushing too hard. As a matter of fact, you do want to see a little drop of paint uh, in the middle of your dot. That's fine. It's not too much paint. Don't worry about it. Here's that kneaded eraser I was talking about. Now, you can get these at any hobby store, craft store. They are fantastic for removing guidelines, but it's like a multi-purpose tool. I'm using it here to hold down my cardstock to the table. Um, it just, you know, it holds it down so your paper isn't moving around, your cardstock isn't moving around on you, your project. Because although it's cardstock and it's a little heavier than paper, it's still paper and it could lift up a lot easier than if you were working on a canvas or obviously a stone. So just want to make sure it's good and secure and tied down. Okay, so the next paint is called Bubblegum Pink. It's an Americana paint from DecoArt. Um, and I'm using my size one nail stylus dotting tool. Now, my size one I reference as my very smallest, and five is how I reference my very largest. Uh, so it's my very smallest tool. And you just want to put a dot right on each of the guidelines. So you're going to have top, bottom, left, and right. And then you're going to place one dot right in the middle of each of those. So that'll be eight dots. And then I'm going to go ahead and place two dots right in between each of those. So one and then two. And I'm going to go ahead and do that all the way around. So that'll be a total of 24 dots going around your center dot. You do want to get your dots as close as you can to the center dot, but without touching it. And if you're just starting out dotting, Feel free to do a couple practice runs before you jump right in. Uh, practice always makes everything better. 
Okay, so for the next color, it's going to be Royal Fuchsia. Again, Deco Art Americana paint, size 2, nail stylus. So this is just a little bit larger than the size 1, just a step up. And you're going to be offsetting your dots. So from the first ring that we did around the center dot, you're going to be placing the second ring offset of the first ring. So right in between on the outer edge of two of the previous dots is where you're going to place each one of your next dots. Okay, so you go ahead and do that all the way around. And just take your time. And if you mess up, it's no big deal. No one's going to notice except for you. <laughs> And then the next color is called Berry Cobbler. Yum. <laughs> um, it is a Deco Art Americana paint. And we're going to be using the size 3 nail stylus. So it's just a little larger still. And this third ring is just offset of the second ring. So go ahead and place a dot right in between on the outer edge of two of the previous dots. All the way around. And if any of your dots are a little smaller, go ahead and double dot it, you know, re-dip your tool and then re-dot that dot. That's totally all right. <laughs> the next color is called Coastal Waters, and it's a Deco Art Americana multi-surface satin paint, just like the Vanilla Shake. So it will dry with a little bit of shine, not too much. Um, it's not a gloss. If you like the high gloss uh, look, then you can either use a gloss enamel or a multi-surface paint. Those are both um, higher shine uh, and or you could always spray um, a protectant on your finished product of um, either a lacquer or a varnish you know you can spray a lacquer on or uh, brush on a varnish that is a gloss um, and that would make your whole project shine so it's just a personal preference whatever you like all right, going back with the size one nail stylus which is your very smallest one and the vanilla shake paint um, we're going to make little bridges around these um, these blue dots here. So I just take my nail stylus, I dip it in paint, dot once on the very outer edge in the center, re-dip it in paint, dot again, re-dip it in paint, dot again, and then continually dot down one side. So all the dots around the top part of the blue dots are all uniform in size and then it just tapers down uh, right on the underneath the underbelly of the dots so it just gives a nice rounder effect to like a petal look all right staying with the size one nail stylus and that same paint vanilla shake i'm just going to do a couple little swipes out um, so I go down to the base of the blue dot, right in between the two little white bridges, and make a swipe up and out and just kind of hug the curve of the bridge. And then I just do it on the opposite side as well. All right, so for the next color, we're going to go with the bubblegum pink and use your largest nail stylus, which I call a size 5, and just stick a pink dot um, right where the little swipes are, right there in between each of the bridges. And then follow up with the Berry Cobbler paint and your pink dotting tool. And you're going to go ahead and place one dot on each of the guidelines. Um, so like right on top of the little white bridges. And just get as close as you can without touching them. You want to try to keep the design nice and tight, as well as you can. But, like I said before, do give yourself plenty of room, um, especially if you're just starting out and you're uncomfortable getting that close. That's, that's fine, too. All right, the next paint is going back with the Royal Fuchsia and the size 5 nail stylus. And go ahead and place a dot right in between the bubblegum pink dot and the berry cobbler dot on either side all the way around. Also feel free to pause these videos at any point and that way you can go ahead and catch up and then just unpause it when you're ready to get back at it. Alright, going with your larger blue tool, we're going to bring that bubblegum pink color back out again and just go ahead and place a dot right 
in the middle of each of the guidelines. So kind of use those as your as your guide. Just kind of look right in between the guidelines. Just put them right down in the divot. All right, so um, going back with the size one nail stylus dotting tool and the vanilla shake paint. And you're going to re-dip your tool and then just dot um, for like the you know the top half of the pink dot and then just have it tapered down right at the bottom right underneath there at the base so mm, size one dip it dot it right in the center start in the center outer edge dip it dot it dip it dot it dip it dot it and then dip it dot and then just dot 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 all the way down to the base so it has that same effect as the previous um, little bridges that we made. And then go ahead and do that to each of the eight larger pink dots. Oh my goodness, if you hear snoring, it is Pablo, my chihuahua. He is right underneath my chair and he's snoring so loud. <laughs> anyway, um, if you follow me on social media, um, you will see that my absence has been because I have been creating a book. Um, I have a new book coming out in January. Um, oddly enough, I had two book offers within the same week. Um, but the first book here is going to be released in January 2020. Um, and it has 12 step-by-step -step, uh, Dot Mandala projects. I'm so excited about it. I cannot wait. And I'm supposed to get a cover photo very soon. And I cannot wait to share it with you. Um, I will post it to my social media accounts. And there are links right here on my YouTube channel for my Facebook and my Instagram pages. So be sure to check them out. All right. So going back with the Coastal Waters paint and the size 1 nail stylus. Um, you just want to swipe from the top edge outer edge of the pink larger pink dots there in towards the center and then you want to go slightly around the um, the berry cobbler dot um, so it kind of makes like a Y it's kind of like holding the little berry cobbler dot and just you know redip it if you need more paint redip it and, and smear it out all right going back with the berry cobbler paint um, and your size 3 nail stylus I'm going to be doing like a backwards bridge. Um, I'm starting down towards the base as low as I can go, right in between the little Y's and the larger uh, pink dots there. And you just want to dot up from the base up towards the center outer edge of the dot. Um, and just get, I think I got about five dots in on each side. Uh, but it's whatever works and whatever fits for yours. All right, moving on to the pink tool and the berry cobbler paint. I am just going to place a dot right on the tip of each of the little you know coastal water Y's there that we got. Um, and then use your size 5 nail stylus and put a dot right next to those on either side all the way around. And then sticking with that size 5 nail stylus we're going to make some more swipes. Um, in and around the berry cobbler dot just like we were doing before. So just kind of go in and then like around it. And you know it doesn't have to be perfect. It isn't going to matter. I guarantee you the person that you give this sweet and wonderful and beautiful handmade card to is not going to be like, oh your swipes aren't perfect. <laughs> so next grab your size three nail stylus and you're going to make a swipe going out right next to um, the swipes that are going in just on either side. Now make sure your design is really good and dry before you move on. You really want to make sure it's dry. Once it's dry it's top dot time so go ahead and grab your lavender tool and you want to place a top dot um, right in the center of the center dot as well as you can. And then we're going to do the opposite with the vanilla shake paint on top of the coastal waters dots um, that are going around. So I'm going to put um, one dot with your size 5 nail stylus in the center of each of those. I have had my father come and hang out with me for the past few days and we have just had an absolute blast. It has been art therapy at its finest. I mean we started off playing with um, watercolors and then 
uh, we moved on to acrylics. We had we made a couple paintings with acrylics, and we we're thinking about heading into some oil painting tonight. <laughs> and I know we're gonna get the clay out, so it's been an absolute blast. Uh, I was thinking about vlogging, or at least blogging about um, our shenanigans. So if you're interested in seeing some pics of what we've created and reading some funny stories about the week, um, then definitely check out my website where I'll post about it all in the blog section. All right, so here I was just um, continuing to highlight the blue paint with the white vanilla shake paint. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of go over top of the swipes with smaller, thinner swipes. Uh, for the outer swipes, I was using the size one nail stylus, and for the larger, thicker inner swipes, the little Ys, I am using a size two nail stylus. All right, go back with the Royal Fuchsia paint, and now we're gonna do some more top dotting. Um, and using your lavender tool, place a dot right in the center of the larger bubblegum pink dots all the way around. And then I'm going to be top dotting the berry cobbler dots um, with the same royal fuchsia. And I'm just going to use my size 5 nail stylus. And that is it for the paint job. Now, um, like I was saying before, you could absolutely lend this design to a stone. You could do it on a canvas. You can make it larger, make it smaller. Um, it all works. So, all right, I'm going to put it on a card. Um, like I said before, I'm not a card maker at all, but I pretty much get the gist of um, how to make a card. So, um, I went with the lighter of the two, you know, pink colored papers and, um, or card stock, I guess I should say. And I know that I want the design on the cover, so I just kind of center it as well as I can, just kind of eyeballing it here. You could measure it out if you wanted to, but I just went with it. Um, and then I just held it on and marked the top little edges, just so I know where to stick it once it has um, double-sided tape on it. All right, I am using double-sided tape because that's just what I have on hand. I didn't feel like running back to the craft store just to buy the little applicators of the little glue dots or whatever they are. Um, but if you were going to make you know, more than one of these, I would definitely go with something uh, that is actually made for card making. Um, I had also picked up some paper. These were four for a dollar on sale at Hobby Lobby. And I, at the time, I couldn't decide, you know, what colors to use. So I went with the one that is more of a cream base. I think it works well with this design. But it's, again, personal preference, whatever you like or whatever you have on hand. And whatever colors you're going to use. So I'm cutting off the edges just to make it slightly smaller. So there's a, you know, a border of card. If you had some fancy scissors, you could cut it out and, you know, have it um, cut that way. But I just used a straight edge. And I cannot tell you how difficult it was for me to use this double-sided sticky tape. Oh my gosh, it was terrible. Look, so I thought, oh, okay, cool, I've got a piece. Nope, <laughs> there was nothing there. So seriously, uh, just get the proper tools. This was ridiculous. But I threw it together because I wanted to show you that it can be done, and it really can be really pretty. Also, you could absolutely um, print something on the paper if you didn't want to handwrite something or you wanted to make it look even more professional. You could absolutely type something up and run the paper through your printer just like you would a normal sheet and then just cut off the edges afterwards um, and do it that way. But I was just going to hand write some notes. I have chicken scratch for handwriting, but I, um, I just think it's a nice personal touch. <laughs> So just go ahead and use whatever you have on hand. And if you are a card maker and you have some, some uh, products that you would highly suggest, um, definitely leave it in the comment section below so other viewers can see what, what works well for card making. I love learning new things, so I always appreciate all the comments that you share and, and the suggestions that you give. I appreciate your feedback and I love it. So. Um, yeah, definitely feel free to let us know what works great, what products are great. 
Um, and then, yeah, just go ahead and glue on your design on the front right there. You could add more than what I did. I just added one little piece in the middle, but you could probably do it to all the corners. I think that's probably the best way to go about that. Um, but other than that, here is the final product. All right, so if you enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, of course, I would love to have you as a subscriber. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon to get notified as soon as I upload. Thanks so much for your time. See you soon.